Okay, question one. Ethene can be hydrated to produce ethanol. We have an equation. We've got what you should, you'll see an awful lot. Just we've got our delta G naught and we've got our delta F. Okay, standard enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. Since we have the delta H, F, it is just delta H is equal to the sum of your delta H, F of your products minus the sum of delta H, F. Oh, sorry. Uh, reactants. Now that is straight out of data book, so no excuses. And then we plug our numbers in. So our product is our ethanol. So minus 278 minus 52 plus, but it's another minus. So I'm just going to put minus uh, 286. Do all that sum and you get out minus 44 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Standard entropy is going to be a little bit harder because you don't have entropy up here, so you're not going to be able to use this basic one. Okay, what you do have is delta G, and delta G you should know is related. Oh, minus delta H minus T delta S, not equals. Um, straight out data book. I'm not putting these in. I should put my little knots in because it says delta S naught, and that's important because that gives us our T. T in delta S naught, or any of the knots, as it were, uh, is 298K. So that's essential for you to be able to work out the rest of it. Okay, so rearrange for this one. So delta S is equal to delta H minus delta G over T. Okay, just rearranging the equation, but you know you can substitute and shift them around as much as you want. Delta G, going to do the same thing as I did up here with products and reactants. So that's going to be minus 175 minus... 68 minus 237. Okay, so that comes out at minus 6. This is also in kilojoules. I'm just reminding myself of this um, because this has got to be in joules, so we've got a change. Um, so we'll plug this in to get the answer though. Uh, so we're just plugging in 44, sorry, minus 44, uh, minus minus 6, so plus 6, uh, is going to get, oh, sorry, divided by 298k, obviously need our temperature, is going to give us minus 0 0.1275. Okay, now that's in kilojoules. Okay, I want to shift that into joules. So I'm going to times that by a thousand. And now here is where I differ slightly from the mark scheme. The mark scheme um, had it minus 130 joules Kelvin to the mole per mole. Per mole, per, sorry, per Kelvin per mole. Um, but I had just taken this straight up and so I had minus 128. Um, both of these totally acceptable, so it doesn't really matter which one you went with um, as long as you changed it to Jules Kelvin because that's what's required in the question. Okay, Worth three marks because you had to do a bit more work than you were doing in the last one. Okay. Calculate the temperature in K at which this reaction just becomes feasible. Okay, so we're back to this equation again. It's the only one you've got with T in it. And you have to know that uh, it becomes feasible when you've got delta G equal to naught. Okay, so you're solving for that. So you're basically just wiping out delta G and rearrange for T. So T is delta H over delta S. So we've got 44 divided by, now this is in kilojoules, so I need my S to be shifted back into kilojoules, but then I already had it as that. So you can either plot it in as 0 0.1275 or you can take it as 0 0.13. Now, if I take it at 0 0.17275, okay, what came out um, in the calculator, then that gives me a 435 Kelvin. Okay, now mark scheme, takes it at the 130 to give us uh, 338 Kelvin, um, which also they're then taking two significant figures and that's what they're putting, two significant figures giving us uh, 340. Now, um, they also says follow through from the one before. So all of these are acceptable answers. Okay, and that's that question.